What is up, everyone? Timothy Wenger here from The Man Effect. And today I have someone from Movember, um, the organization. And Robert Huffman is his name. Robert, what exactly is your position in the land of Movember? Yep. Well, first off, Tim, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so my position is the university development manager um, here within our, our community development team here at the Movember Foundation. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's a very big title. Uh, and, and how long have you been with Movember for? Uh, I've been working here for about nine months, uh, nine but months. I've been um, volunteering with Movember for close to 10 years now. Oh, dang. All right. What got you into it? Uh, yeah. So it, it was actually back in the day when I was in college, I was a sophomore uh -huh. at a Florida Atlantic university and I was joining a fraternity and I was looking for a philanthropy to kind of get behind um, that I could relate to. Mm. And so somebody mentioned to me about Movember um, and the fact that you can grow a mustache uh, for a cause, you know, for men's health. And immediately I just thought it was hilarious because um, I think every man wants to grow a mustache. We just never really have, have a reason to. Yeah. Um, and so immediately I thought it was awesome. And so we got a bunch of our guys involved the first year um, just for the heck of it, you know, just for fun. Uh, and the following year is when we started to like take fundraising a little bit more seriously. And we started mm. to raise about, about 20 grand a year and we were having Dang. a blast doing it and we were starting conversations on campus and we were really seeing the impact um, that it could have amongst our peers to actually yeah. start conversations and raise awareness for men's health. Um, and so that's how I first got involved. And, you know, throughout the past nine years, a lot's, you know, happened in my life and within my family's life that's kind of gravitated me more towards Movember. Um, and my passion has definitely grown a lot more for, it, especially now that I, I work for the foundation. Interesting. And in your 10 years of being associated with this organization, what are some of like the most impactful um, moments that you've been able to witness? Yep. Yeah. So the first one, I guess, is going back to um, just after I started. So a year after I started in November, the following year, I came home with a mustache from school. And, you know, <laughs> um, at the end of November, it, it's, it's Thanksgiving, you know, right? So yeah. we're sitting around the dinner table and just chit chatting, you know, and my mom is just looking at me with this ridiculous mustache that I have. Cause at, at, at the time, after 30 days, I, it was barely like, you know, 30 hairs. It was just kind of yeah. sprout. You know? yeah. So it was ridiculous looking and it looked like I just had like a dirty upper lip. She goes, Robert, what, like, honestly, what is this and why are you doing it? And so I started talking about men's health and, you know, and mm -hmm. what Movember supports mm -hmm. um, in, our, in our three causes being prostate cancer, testicular cancer, mental health and suicide prevention. And um, in my whole life, you know, my family, we were always told that my grandfather had a heart attack uh, at, the, at the age of 37. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, filling out family trees, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, the whole reason, you know, that I knew that he had passed away. Um, mm -hmm. and, but it wasn't until that moment at Thanksgiving dinner when um, my mom actually started talking about her, her dad, my grandfather, and that he, he took his life at the age of 37. Um, uh -huh. And so that was kind of a groundbreaking moment for me to realize how important it is that we start conversations and that we break down stigmas that yeah. exist. Because in the past, you know, back in the day, back in, in the uh, you know, 1960s and 70s, suicide was very embarrassing. And, and a lot of the families were, were ashamed, you know, at, mm -hmm. at their family members who would take their life. And so what they did is, you know, they, they just wouldn't talk about it and they would hide it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, I saw how, how that impacted my mom and my grandmother and my uncle and how it impacted their life um, and, it, and how it still impacts their life. And so I've seen what suicide can do, you know, to generations come, but at the same time, how much of an impact that a simple mustache could actually make to yeah. start in these conversations, you know, and, mm -hmm. and having fun with it, you know, and mm -hmm. making sure that people feel comfortable actually talking about their issues that they're facing. Yeah. That's, that's great. I've, I've found in my own journey of my, my, my writings and my project that just facilitating a conversation, like just starting it, it has almost as much impact as the conversation itself. Like yep. just getting people moving in their head, like it's just incredible to see. Yep. Um, so have you been able to specifically work with the, the mental health area or have you been more in the, the cancer and stuff? Part. I'm not fully sure how, how it works in your organization. So if you could expound on that, that'd be great. Yep. And so with my position, I work in development. So mm -hmm. a lot of what I do is community outreach and community building. Um, oh, and wow. so 
with working with all the universities, it's, it's actually pretty cool because that's where I first got started with Movember. Yeah. Um, and so we have about 500 universities that participate in Movember, yeah. uh, which is about 10,000 students. Um, and so, you know, most of the time I'm on, on the phone talking to these students, talking about, you know, what events they're doing to raise awareness, um, what kind of impact they're making on campus, what's the conversations going around um, campus about men's health, if there even is any, and how we can start those conversations. Yeah. Um, and then within the foundation, we have a whole separate team, um, which is our programs team, and they're responsible for allocating the funds uh, that we raise. And so, you know, we have a team for prostate cancer, for uh -huh. test test testicular cancer. Yeah. And then we also have a team for mental health and suicide prevention. And the thing about mental health and, and that side of it is that a lot of the impact that you can make is just through the conversations, mm -hmm. you know? And so through my conversations, I've, I've been able to kind of get people more aware, you know, of, of what to do in a situation. Um, if you, if you do think that you need to talk to somebody, um, and, and how to actually make progress, you know, with friends and family in terms of, getting people more vulnerable and getting them to actually open up and, and mm -hmm. how to listen and how to approach those types of conversations. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so with the funds you guys raised, do you kind of like divvy it specifically per category or is that specifically just kind of go for overhead and then um, like the cancer or something like that? Like how does, how does that work for you guys? Yep. So we have a plan um, in terms of, you know, where we're going to be allocating our, our, our budget every year. Uh -huh. Um, and so, the, you know, the, that, that, that's organized basically, you know, five to 10 years out in terms oh, of, wow. you know, which programs that we're going to fund, which programs that we want to start, and we're going to pilot in certain areas yeah. uh, to test them out and see how they work. Um, and so here in the U.S., one of the ones that's it's really great is called Making Connections. Hmm. Um, and this focuses on the mental well-being of young men and boys around the country and it's in 16 different sites around the country. Oh. And it basically helps these um, – these young men and boys, you know, kind of get through this adolescent period. Um, yeah. If they've gone through difficult times, um, whether they're, you know, veterans or if they've gone through domestic violence or gang violence and how, and how to approach those, um, those different issues to get mm. them on the right track as they approach adulthood. Yeah. And, and what was the name of that? It's called Making Connections. Making and, and we've partnered with the Prevention Institute, um, which is based down in uh, Tampa, Florida on that program. All right. Very cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share the screen and just show people part of your website um, and just yep. where they cool. can find the mental health section. Um, mm -hmm. If that's something that interests them, let's pull that up here. So can you see it now? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, you go up to Men's Health on their on their website. These guys got a killer website. It's looking looking great. Come up to Men's Mental Health right here. Boom. Loving this. Let's see how it loads. Everyone's got mustaches. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. New trend. So if the people watching and there's obviously access to being able to talk period on your website too. So if people don't know where to start, this is a great place to start in my opinion. Um, and I love that you guys have created this resource. Um, it's very respectable in my opinion. That's really cool. So what, what, what's, what's some things that people underrate or don't know about Movember that you think they should know? That's what I'm curious about. Um, yeah. It's, so it's, it's, I mean, one thing that if, if somebody's never actually participated in, in Movember, I encourage everybody to at least try it because once you have a mustache, um, the, the looks you get, the conversations that happen are, I mean, second to none because <laughs> the first two weeks are, I mean, it, it's a, it's a truly hairy journey, you know, because the first two weeks are a little bit brutal because yeah. you have this ridiculous thing that's kind of popping out. People are not sure if it's a shadow yep. or if you forgot to like wash your face and your upper lip a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, I mean, you start to build this community. So when you see other people growing that mustache in the first few weeks, yeah. you really, you know, I mean, they become your brothers, you know, because you guys are going through it together. And that's what we're all about is building a community around people that actually care about men's health. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not only for men too. So women could do basically everything that men do except for grow the mustache, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so a lot of that is encourage conversation, fundraising, hosting events, getting more active during the month. 
Mm. Um, and so just by building this community is, is, is one thing that I truly love about, about Movember. Um, because anywhere you go, if you see, see somebody with a mustache and you just give them a little compliment, you know, about their mustache, even if it is pretty horrible, um, that, <laughs> that, that, that goes a long way. And we always like to say that the worst mustache is actually the best mustache because it raised, it raised the most eyebrows and gets the most conversation. Gets the most attention. Bad yeah, press exactly. is good press, huh? <laughs> exactly. exactly, man. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun when you see a bunch of guys, you know, growing mustache together, walking around the mm-hmm. city or, you know, at, at a university and you have 400 guys growing mustaches and you're all just high fiving each other. It mm-hmm. builds this really unique camaraderie amongst each other. Mm. And so you, you said you do a lot on universities. Do people outside of universities also participate? Yep. And so that's only, that's my role is to mm-hmm. work with all of our universities. Um, mm-hmm. We also have a corporate development team. And so mm-hmm. they work with all of our corporations, um, teams like, you know, Pepsi and Nike and um, companies like that. They have a huge participation in November that even runs global. Um, wow. And so they have all their offices participate. Um, and so, and, and then we also have some other development managers who are responsible for first responders mm-hmm. um, who are police and firefighters and lifeguards. Yeah. And then we also have a sports uh, development manager and they look over all of our, you know, um, amateur sports, college sports, as well as professional sports. That's awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Well, so now I'm going to throw you a curveball here since you just said sports, but, uh, yeah. So my, my project is based solely on one question and then it, it's grown into many other things. Kind of like you guys started with just growing a mustache and now it's grown into many other things. Yeah. Um, so the question I've asked thousands of people is, if you were to describe what it means to be a man in one word, what would it be and why? That's a great question. I, I was browsing your website last night and got, you know, saw some incredible answers. Um, yeah. And for me, I think it would be faithful Hmm. be my word um because to me being faithful it embodies um being loyal uh being truthful and and constant and steadfast um Hmm. and so to me that's you know really what a man embodies i i I think is you know actually pushing forward you know even when the times are tough um and pushing forward with, with with truth and with humility um and and to me, that's what defines leadership as well mm. is almost being, being a servant, um, yeah. you know, and serving from the back. Um, and so to me, faithful would be, be my word. I love it. It's been a while since I heard someone choose that word. So that's good. Oh yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. I'm always, I always love hearing what people choose because it's fun for me. Um, and what I'm curious, kind of a follow up question is who do you think of when you when you use the word faithful, is there a specific person that comes to mind? Um, I would say probably my father, um, my father, my grandfather, you know, who really kind of, you know, show me the ropes in terms of what it's like to be a man, um, not only through their successes, but through their failures. Mm. And to me, that's, that's really how you learn to be a man is by other people failing and knowing when to, tell you that they failed, you know, mm-hmm. and to actually explain why they failed and, you know, what they can do better. And, and to me, that's how I've learned a lot. And so my dad is, you know, extremely humble in yeah. that sense and, and always kind of showing me that, you know, it's not about who, who raised, raised their hand first, you know, and who uh-huh. kind of is in front of the pack, but more so who's in the back, who's, who's encouraging people, um, and getting people excited and, and trusting them, um, Mm. with their kind of love and their tenderness Mm -hmm. um, versus always being, you know, what everybody says is, you know, just the term man up, you know, and being extremely hard to me, that's not what a, um, what a true man should be like. Yeah. That's good. I I, I love the, uh, it's, it's those guys in the background who don't say anything, but are just doing, those are the ones you got to be scared of because they're the real guys. (laughs) It's like, Oh yeah. Oh man. (laughs) There's a great book uh, called Ego is the Enemy by uh-huh. Ryan Holiday. And, um, and there, there's a little excerpt within the book, and it's this general who, who is telling one of his, um, his guys within his fleet in the military, and he, he gives him two, two propositions within you know, his career within the military. He says you can either choose to do mm-hmm. or choose to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if you choose to be, you know, you'll get all the credit and the fame 
Um, but you'll most likely lose a lot of the close relationships that you have, you know, with mm -hmm. family and friends um, mm -hmm. and with the community, or you can choose to do um, and actually make an impact mm -hmm. uh, in people's lives and actually do something with your life, but you might not get the credit or the fame. And, and to me, you know, you really do have those, you know, you come in into those types of, um, you know, two crossroads quite often in life, especially within your career. Mm -hmm. If you, if you want to choose to be, um, you know, and get all the credit and all the fame, or who mm -hmm. to choose to do and actually make an impact um, with the potential of not getting any credit or any fame with it. Yeah, I love it. That's what it, it makes me think of all the uh, Instagram entrepreneurs who are like motivational speakers, but they've never worked a day in their life. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. come on. Like, I know you just bought these, these motivational quotes online and are just reposting them. Like, and, but then there's the other guy out there who's running his business, who's doing very well and isn't saying a word and he's just yep. doing and yep. I, I find that very true in a lot of aspects of life too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I'm, I'm also curious too, like your, your organization's worldwide. And um, I, I was actually surprised when I saw that. Cause you know, I mean, everyone knows about like no shave November and mo like the Movember, the whole thing, like mm -hmm. it's, it's in my brain. Right. Yep. Um, but I didn't know you guys were worldwide. I didn't know you hit other aspects of helping men's issues. And so I'm kind of curious, how did that unfold? Um, and mm -hmm. like, and do you like, man, I, I can't grasp like a, a worldwide organization. Like, that's awesome. So I just yeah. tell, tell me more about that. Cause I'm just fascinated yep. by that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible how quickly Movember's um, progressed. And it's all, it's, it's all because of, of, of the community of Mo Burrows and Mo Sisters, um, which are <laughs> people that we call our community. And so, um, so like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, but that's that's part of it. I mean, the mustache is cheesy, right? So it's it's yeah. having fun and doing good. That's kind of our slogan. But um, I'll take it back to you know our our founding roots, which is actually down in Melbourne, Australia. Uh -huh. um, and so it was in 2003, so 15 years ago. Um, a couple guys were in a bar just talking about you know fashion trends and you know how how fashion always seems to kind of go in cycles and come back. But uh -huh. at that time, the mustache did not come back. It had not come back since the 70s. Um, and they were like, what, what if we actually start a, you know, a campaign where we grow a mustache during the month of November? And uh -huh. we call it Movember because um, Mo is slang for mustache down in Australia. Oh, really? No yeah, way. So that's where the name <laughs> comes from. And so it started off with just a competition with 30 guys growing a mustache just to see what happens. Um, and they were getting a lot of questions, you know, in terms of why are you guys growing this? Like, what's the mm -hmm. cause? Mm -hmm. And they really didn't have an answer for it. Um, but at the time, they, they saw the success of, um, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October mm -hmm. and how you associate the pink ribbon with women's health mm -hmm. um, and, and how much of an impact that was making and getting women to check themselves for breast cancer. But there was nothing really out there for men. No, yeah. Um, and so they decided to, you know, kind of, um, put the flag in, into Movember as being kind of the men's health month. Um, mm -hmm. And they started raising money the following year um, in 2004. And they raised $50,000 that year of mm -hmm. the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia. Um, and so since then, I mean, it's, it's taken off, as you can tell. And so yeah. five years after that is when it came to the U.S. Uh, so we've been in the U.S. for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and so since then, you know, we have – We've raised over $800 million uh, to fund over 1,200 men's health projects in wow. over 20 countries. Um, and we have offices in Melbourne, Australia, um, Los Angeles, um, Toronto, as well as London. And so we have four main offices in which we cover um, most of the globe in terms of, you know, getting people more, um, more aware about men's health and actually hosting these events and hosting these awareness campaigns. Yeah. Um, so we truly are, you know, a global organization. We're the world's largest men's health charity. Um, but it's because of all the rock stars out there. You know, here at the foundation, we say all the community members are the rock stars and we're just the roadies. Yeah. Um, they're the ones who are truly, you know, making the impact, you know, mm -hmm. growing mustaches and hosting events and getting more people to actually talk about men's health issues. Yeah. That's incredible. Does it ever just like blow your mind how big the organization is? Like, um, like sometimes it's, you know, I, a lot of times I, I'm so used to it because I've been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> That's um, fair. <laughs> but I, I meet people all the time here in LA who have never heard of Movember. And so it always kind of, it, it takes yeah. me back, you know, to actually yeah. give, give the pitch, you know, about how we started and, 
Um, and most people, you know, find it pretty interesting because it is hilarious. You know, it's like we're, we're I mean, we're growing facial hair mm. and in doing so we raised almost a billion dollars to actually make a difference in men's health. So it's, it's, it's working and, and people are having fun doing it and that's all we can ask for. That's bizarre. I'm like, it's just, it's fun, fun to hear, you know, cause I, I yeah. love it when people just keep showing up and they keep doing things and just watching it increase and increase. I just really appreciate yep. that. So, yep. and it, it, it kind of plays the entrepreneurial um, conversation, you know, yeah. you never know what can take off, right? You just, you just got to put yourself out there and, you know, just a couple of guys in a bar um, having beers, just talking about mustaches and yeah. look what it's turned into. You know? yeah. So you just, you never know really what, what can happen if you actually just kind of take that leap. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Just do it. Yeah, man. I'm just really curious now too about everything, but, <laughs> um, so what are, so what are, what are some of the best ways that people can get plugged into your organization? Yep. So the best way is to go to Movember.com, like you had up mm -hmm. on the screen, um, mm -hmm. and actually sign up. Um, so you can sign up and become an official Mobro or a Mosista, um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and at the, at the start of the month, you uh -huh. can start growing your mustache um, or get the men in your life to start growing their mustache. But the most important thing is to sign up and you'll start getting updates from us. Um, yeah, about, right, you know, right there, people. Yep. <laughs> the super easy to do. And, you know, it, it's all, it's all peer to peer. And so what we do is we, we fundraise. Um, uh -huh. We're actually, we're one of the first, you know, organizations to actually start peer to peer fundraising. And so we've kind of progressed along the way and kind of learn what works, what doesn't work. And so it's yeah. a really, really fluid platform on our website um, to get people, you know, to share content on Facebook or email to get more people to kind of sponsor your mustache and, and donate to your, to your most space and to your mustache. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's really, really cool. You can add a photo up there and add your motivation of why you're doing it. So mm -hmm. for instance, the reason I'm doing it is, is for my grandfather, Sonny, who took his life. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of, you know, brings the cause to your mustache. And so every time I look at, yeah. at my face, you know, I think about my family and I think about you know, what they've been through and, and why I'm doing it to help other people who might be going through something similar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's why mental health is such a big deal to me is because I feel like there's a real uh, current cultural uh, pressure to say that you're strong and that if you admit weakness, like it's not good, but there's a lot of tools out there to help men through depression or through suicide, you know, and it's like, if I don't know, I've lost quite a couple friends to suicide. And so it's just like, it's not cool to me. Like I, I, yeah. I'm just not down at all. It's, and, and so I just want men yeah. to know there's, there's resources out there. Like you don't just don't get trapped in your own world. I yeah, know. man, the, the stats are always staggering. Like whenever I go and give a presentation, it always, it always gets me, man, because four out of five suicides here in the U S are actually by men. Yeah. Uh, so that's 80%. And, Largely that's because us guys just, we do a horrible job of just talking um, mm -hmm. about our issues, you know, mm -hmm. physical or mental. We, we feel like we don't want to put the burden on somebody else. And so we just kind of, you know, take it upon ourselves to keep it inside of us. Um, so we don't talk about our emotions. You know, when people ask us how we're doing, we typically just say good. Um, mm -hmm. And when we do have conversations with people, it's usually about sports or the news. Rarely ever do we, you know, go get beers and actually talk about a breakup that we just had or loss yeah. of a job or something and actually, talk about how it makes us feel. Yeah. Um, and so that's one thing that, you know, that we're trying to do here at the movement foundation is get more people to dig a little bit deeper um, in the conversations, um, you know, that we're having. And another stat yeah. is that, um, so 70% so of us guys feel like um, our friends can, can rely on us, you mm -hmm. know, to actually be there and be dependable, especially within those conversations. But mm -hmm. only 40% of, of us guys, feel like we can actually open up and have these deep conversations with our friends. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that alone shows us that we, we know, we know that we're there for our friends. Yep. But us ourselves are not, you know, depending on, on our friends to actually be able to open up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was writing this article on male friendship mm -hmm. and I found it really interesting too, because oftentimes we perceive our relationship with other men as a display of our masculinity. And so if we show feminine, feminine-esque traits in our relationships, we think that's a negative thing. And um, so it's, it's very interesting for me to try to help people realize like men emote too, 
they emote differently, but it's not like a, a lesser thing. And, but then if you accept that, most men don't even know how to say like, hey, like I'm depressed right now or like I really hate my life. Yeah. Um, and so if anyone's watching who, who is in that place, like just grab a friend you really trust and just be honest with them. Stumble through it. Like that's the best yeah. thing you can do. Like and just it, start it's, somewhere. It's okay to rely on your friends. Like for me, yeah. I mean, I've definitely had, had my, you know, my, my peaks and my valleys and my, and my yeah. valleys can be pretty low. Um, yeah. You know, especially when I moved out here to LA about nine months ago, I was going through a lot of anxiety, you know, and if, just cause I was so far from my family, you know, and here I am kind of, you know, changing my career drastically. And yeah. I, don't know, I just had a lot, a lot of like a pit of anxiety and I didn't know how to deal with it. Um, but thankfully, you know, I started opening up to some friends here at the foundation in, in the office, just getting coffee. And it's amazing to learn that I'm not the only one going through this, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I love the phrase, no man is an Island. Um, because mm -hmm. although we think that we're the only ones going through these difficult times, mm -hmm. I mean, most people have gone through a difficult time in their life, you know, yeah. mentally. Yeah. And so just knowing, knowing that, knowing that, that there's plenty of more people out there who are going through something similar and that together we'll all get through it. Mm -hmm. It really brings a lot of peace and a lot of calmness into, uh, you know, how we're feeling and knowing that we'll actually get through it. Yeah. That's good stuff. I also, I love to tell people as well, like, you're not that special to think that this problem is only with you. Like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, you're not that cool of a human. Like other people have yeah. had these issues too. And there are resources out there for you. Yeah. So, well, I'm actually going to wrap it up here uh, okay. with one last question for you. What mm -hmm. advice would you give to younger men? Um, or like, let's say your younger self, what advice would you give your younger self just about being a man and mental health and, and just Movember esque stuff? <laughs> you kind of broke up for a, a bit, but um, oh, no. what advice would I give to my younger self, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I would say probably honestly just ask more questions. A lot mm. of times I, I would, even in, 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 like in the classroom, I would not, I'd be afraid to raise my hand and ask questions because I didn't want to seem dumb. Mm -hmm. um, when, when now, you know, I, I've learned that a lot of times the questions that you have to ask, and this kind of relates to mental health, the, the questions you have to ask, everybody else is thinking too. But you think that you're the only one who has this question, you know, and whether it be about anxiety, you know, and actually, um, you know, starting these conversations with certain people or just about a, a simple question, you know, in math class. Um, don't let your ego get in the way of, of who, who you want to be. Um, cause it's really easy to just kind of let life, you know, grab you and kind of take you along its path instead of figuring out who's the man that I want to be and, and how can I get there and to not let the ego get in your way. And, um, mm. yeah, so it, it'd be to, you know, don't be afraid to raise your hand um, and ask questions or even, you know, within these student leadership positions, you know, don't be afraid to, to raise your hand and say, guys, I cannot, I'm just not mentally fit for this position right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I need to step down. Um, Cause a lot of times I just took on a lot, a lot more than I could probably handle. Um, and so emotionally, you know, and mentally it actually kind of overwhelmed me throughout college. Um, and so I, I wish I raised my hand a little bit more to ask more questions and actually, you know, admit that maybe I, I wasn't in the right place mentally to actually take on something. That's really good stuff. And I hope, I hope people listen to you on that. Um, well, for everyone who's watching or tuning in, I will add links to their website and ways that you can get plugged in. Um, also, are you guys on social media? I'm assuming as well, like Facebook yeah. and Instagram and all of that. Okay. All those social forms are on there. All right. Well, I'll put links for those as well. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything. Um, no, I think that's about it. Do you have anything else you want to fill people in on before we end this recording? Um, no, I just hope that everybody will kind of go on movember.com and actually check out our website. And we're very transparent with everything that we funded. So you can actually go on there and see the work it. that we funded and and dig a little bit deeper into those programs. Cause like I said, there's 1200 men's health projects that we funded. That's awesome. Over the past 15 
years. And so it, it's all up there. And, you know, I encourage everybody to sign up and create a team, uh, uh, challenge your friends, get on board and, you know, grow a mustache and, <laughs> and mustache and actually start this conversation. And that includes you, Tim. I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to shave the beard and grow the mustache. Over. Just the mustache, yeah. yeah My man, girlfriend would kill me. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all for a good cause, right? Can't blame you. <laughs> I would love to actually do a good old handlebar mustache. I did one years ago, so I, I might bring it back. You can, man. I, I see a lot of potential in you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on. And everyone, I hope you take time to check out the website and get plugged in. All right.